So here's Miki Kono. Thank you, Sam. Hi, my name is Miki. I just give you a brief background of what I'm doing so far at the Microsoft and other companies. So I've been UX researcher in Slash Human Factor for almost about 15 years now. And my background coming from Sony, Honda, NNG, uh, Hewlett Packard Company. And I landed the job at Microsoft in 2005 at the Media Center, Media Room, in MSN, then landed at the Visual Studio team and a fantastic group of people, fantastic tools. And I was lucky enough to be able to do some of the agile tools and we are all talking about. My background on education is uh, I have a human factors and applied experimental psychology. You might wonder is what psychology got to do with it, but psychology it has a lot to do with it. it when you, in terms of when you try to find out the user behavior patterns, understand user behavior, motivation, emotions. It's a very important to have a psychology background for the UX researcher to be able to assess the impact of the product. My expertise are uh, I love doing international work. I just came back from Japan about May. Uh, we met fantastic people from NEC, Fujitsu, NTT Docomo. We had a great time in understanding the Japanese culture as well. I'm myself from Jap Japan, Japanese as well. But at the same time, I'm, I love doing uh, complex software, uh, enterprise software, as well as Azure tool. And also, I have expertise around the multimedia. So when you, in terms of think about the UX research, isn't it what you feel like is UX research, it's more like a Japanese tea ceremony. It's very complex, long, and very proper. And it takes so much patience for even serving the tea as well as receiving the tea. And it takes almost about two hours to even get a sip of the tea. So it's, it's a really ridiculous process. That's what probably most of you think about UX research, right? And yes, I've done so many of them. Um, when I was in, in the TFS team, I done site visit. I did a persona research. I was able to visit in Starbucks and Vertifor, under, fully understanding Agile teams, and as well as large and uh, quant survey. And uh, of course, international usability studies, as well as a complete the benchmark, because like Justin uh, showed you some of the PowerPoint, uh, we are wondering, is it better than Balsamic or not? So its best way to do is it's a competitive benchmark, and I was able to provide some good feedback. This is a common UX research lab takes time, and as you see, it's weeks. It's not about dates. Starting from about three weeks before the actual research even starts, you have to recruit the researchers, uh, recruit the participants to be able to participate for the study. And Tim and I work together to practice uh, what kind of task we need to test, what kind of method we need to use. Then maybe a week before we need to set up the machine, we might have to put the prototype together. So by the time into the research, it's already three weeks past. It's one sprint for the TFS team. And sometimes I'm stuck in the lab for almost two weeks. I don't know if some of you have been to the usability lab. It's really dark. You don't get the sunshine for a while. I mean, I'm in Seattle, so it doesn't matter. But <laughs> two weeks in sitting in the lab and you're just using, running a study every single day, it's a really exhausting process. And by the time you finish, and team and I get together to put together analysis, uh, put together data, it takes about, about another two weeks, and most of the time in the three weeks pass. So, as you see, it's probably two months to three months to even even get your research questions started to get actual results. So it's, it takes way too long. So, Current challenges in the UX data acquiring cycle for the most of the large enterprise company is we really need to get the user feedback really before the coding even starts because we want to know it's going to even work. We, we want to know the feedback in the sprint release now so we can show the demo to management and, and ship the product. There's no time. We, we can't 
test every single user story, and usability takes usability study takes just simply way too long. We need results fast. So we really need to get cycle faster. So when we enter in, in doing a three week sprint, so I have to be very, very creative. So here's what we've done in Agile environment, and this is a TFS team case studies. We did right method. Some of you may know about the right method. Rapid iterative testing and evaluation. You can finish the study in one day. Quick pile study, you can finish study in whole one week. In persona happy hour, you might think like, well, happy hour is nothing to do with actual study, but you know what? I'm only myself in a TFS team. I want to make sure the team is engaging and understanding the persona profile. If developers and the QAs and PMs understand the persona, that's already one step eliminated. So I, ha I don't have to do the many study as I need to because often, sometimes I need to educate the team that who is the, the target. But if we bringing in them to be a mingle and to be honest and open and collaborative, I might not need to do the many study. So let's talk about rapid iterative testing evaluation. This is basically the continuous design iteration, and you can be accomplished in one day. Uh, usually target, it's a very small elements so that you can accomplish in the focus area in one day. Design increments, design improvement is incremental because every user tests it with a different design versions. So requires dedicated UX researcher because you have to be able to assess the incremental design changes as well as required to have a dedicated designer or maybe developer to be in the back of the lab. So continue to iterate. Changes in the interface are made as soon as uh, we decided this is an issue and that issue has to be, solution has to be completely clear. And change the interface is tested with the next user so that next user already are using in, in a better and a somewhat improved design. So assume first person coming in at 9 a.m. could be Steve Ballmer. It's, uh, and maybe Andy Lee, by the time Andy Lee comes at 11 a.m., we might made some changes already. So by the time the last person comes, we have a version 0.5 version of the design. And designer, developer, and researcher, three of us together to kind of finalize the data analysis and we get the final design. This is very agile. These are some of the pros. You can complete the study in one day. And very collaborative because you have to decide what kind of changes need to be made in 30 to 45 minutes in the back of the room. We have to agree on the change, otherwise we can move forward or we lose the chance. So therefore, it's kind of forcing us to decide on, on the best possible solution. And it's a visual because visually changing it and even management or some people watching, you can see the design change, how it impact to the user. Cost is sometimes it's issue for uh, the people because developers stay in the one day in the lab. It's a lot of cost, the resource issue. But if you spend the next three weeks to four weeks to keep changing it, maybe might as well you just throw in a developer in the back of the lab for one day so you can finish in the design in the one day. Some of the cons, because we're focusing on the smaller increment and the smaller elements, Technically, is it feasible? Uh, it's, sometimes it's, it's a questionable because change is going so quickly, maybe it's technically not feasible. We don't have a time to think about that kind of investigation. And the feature is limited. We're not talking about end-to-end -end scenario. We're not talking about three to five user story. We're probably talking about one to two. Corridor performance is sometimes misleading because Often we use a prototype and mockups. You, you know the mockups and prototype. When you, you show to the user, hey, this is really fast, this is great, but it's a mockup, it's not real product. So it could be misleading. So key is to not to test performance or actual quality of the design. Some of the example we use, uh, when I did with uh, Tyler Gibson, he's 
he's up there right there. Um, he's a great designer, and I love working with him because he can get issue very quickly, precise, very fast. And we typically agree, so it's easier. If we disagree, it's really hard to continue for the, the right study. So the first thing was I, I did for the task switching, I think this is a Jamie's. Um, um, I think it's a James. And we decided to have a context switching in on the left left side with a light click. But user did not like it. So we actually moved to the my walk space and they really literally get it. So we actually sticking with that. Uh, another one is a task board. I work with Greg Ball and Aaron Bjork. Uh, we thought maybe deciding to orange as a bug, it could be pretty obvious for the user, but it wasn't obvious. So we changed back the color to blue, we relabeled it, and instead of calling my work, we decided to not yet, not yet start it. So it worked well for the rest of the people. Next one I'm gonna talk about is a quick pulse study. A quick pulse study is a week-long process, continuous user feedback with only three users coming in a Friday. Storyboarding testing, uh, quick iteration of a split release, um, we can use for all those too. Uh, Justin mentioned that we worked really well with the quick pulse study for uh, the, his areas as well. We basically recruit three users every week, coming in a Friday. We can use for anything. A, any, the PM wants to test with some concept, uh, the developer wants to test some of the release version, that's okay. One hour for each participant. Uh, 9 to 10, 10 to 11, 12, uh, 11 to 12, three sessions on Friday. If we need to do two areas, we can extend it to the all day. Typically, we have a three target users, a persona. One is a Peter, the lead and scrum master for Aaron and Greg's area. Angie for the Justin's area. Elvis for the Jamie's area. Quick summary of finding it's sending out the Monday. So by Monday, team has a better idea what happened. Um, but if team actually watch the session on Friday, by the time of Friday afternoon, they have a very good idea what happened with the user, so they can go ahead fixing, creating a new user story, whatever possible. Email results usually a little bit detailed results sending out to the management so that they can see exactly what happened. And since I was all by myself with the Bing team, um, Christina Boros team, I'm gonna use some of the example later on. Her team has a dedicated contractor to run quick pulse study every week. We didn't have a luxury, so I have to do it every other month, but it still worked well. This is, this is as you see, it's, it's not weeks anymore. I remember the full scale study was weeks. Now, we're talking about dates. Participant recruited, we decided who to target. We pick one of those three personas on Monday and Tuesday, Wednesday, setting up to maybe go through some of the tasks. By Thursday, we have a prototype coding ready, so Friday morning we tested. Results is coming on the following Monday, so team can act very quickly with the results. So I'm gonna go step by step to show you some of the plan, um, phase one, one, to, one to four, I think, planning, so, so start with the planning. Key is to plan ahead. You need, if you have an enterprise like a big company, uh, you must have a user ready lab or you can use even conference room. You need to book that same place so that team knows exactly where you need to go to. So you need to also focusing on the feature area target. Uh, again, you can test with end to end, but you can really focus on the sprint feature areas how many of them you need to target. You need to get the budget if you need to recruit and give them some incentives. The timing of, of the, the study as well. But what I decided for the next year, I'm just gonna do it from Jan, January to June, every week. Hopefully we get money for, to do the quick pulse study, dedicated user researcher to be around the study, but who knows. But uh, resources and lab allocation is the key, so make sure to reserve the lab. Now, Phase two, you have to prepare well. Uh, you need to book the usability lab or conference room in your case. And we have a pretty very nice observing room so they can kind of, it's a dark usability lab so people usually 
kind of escaping to the usability lab. They're not necessarily watching the user. So they bring a laptop, kind of hang out. It's, it's really nice. But at the same time, if they even look at the user, user uh, research for observing even 15 minutes, it is still good enough for me that they are actually engaging. Some of the, the prototype uh, uh, we used for uh, like the right one is a Greg's one. Uh, Greg put together some of the sprint planning storyboard. Uh, we used it. And Mario put together some of the hosted TFS. This is an actual sprint demo. But uh, we, you, we created a testing version to test it. So again, uh, we can be very flexible what to test it. Then once preparation is done, you have to stuck in the lab for probably just, just the three hours. It's not like this. Um, we have a better, beautiful lab, actually, at the Microsoft. If any of you are interested, I can actually give you a tour. So communication is the key, not just running the test itself. Um, communication. I usually use some kind of little bit more visual, so it's kind of uh, stick in your eyes. Uh, this is a perception result, a standard usability scale. It's a very used uh, often for the many uh, companies. This is a com combination of uh, satis user satisfaction, user reaction, as well as usability. And they, those three elements combine together to get, give you a percentage. So 85%. I think this was uh, uh, Team Explorer. <laughs> team Explorer did a fantastic job. And 85% for the Team Explorer for this one. And we also sometimes test with the real, uh, real bits, which require some of the assessing of the performance. So often, some tasks are not so good, but some tasks really did well. But the overall percentage was 83%. I, I don't remember this one. I think this is Justin's area. And sometimes I send out a little bit more detail, uh, the feedback, that well, this area need to change, this area need to change, here's a recommendation and all that. But sometimes it's not enough, and sometimes I have to put together the video clip. Video clip is pretty powerful, so people are watching it, and this is also video um, actual at the mouse cursor, uh, you can actually saw, so you can send out the video clip so people get the user impact immediately. Some of the application for using my dear friend Christina Boros, another UX researcher, we actually co-funded together at the MSN and the Bing team. And I brought it to the dev dev to be a little bit more uh, application, the different type of application. But the Bing core search uh, using a different uh, style for the quick path study. They're using a one target user type. They don't have a persona. Uh, core search, as you can imagine, you can just search in the result page and some of the toolbars and so on. So it's a pretty simple. But they recruit three users every month, and, but it's a Thursday instead of a Friday. Thursday, and by the time of Friday, result sends out. The focus area is a little bit more specific and focusing on the core search behavior. Therefore, setup is a little bit shorter and simpler compared to the TFS team. But they do just uh, informal debriefing only. That's good enough for them because it's very specific. And they send out the quarterly newsletter so that management aware what kind of thing they tested. But sometimes they use an hour and a half, might be overkill, for, um, because they're using an hour and a half for each participant. So core search for an hour and a half, sometimes it, they can't use it entire hour. Therefore, sometimes they do the free format search exercise. Uh, they spend three, 30 minutes just to do the core search. And sometimes they're combining together the eye tracking study, which is uh, important for them. They're sending out this type of summary, this type of newsletters. Then next, I'm just going to talk about pros and cons. Of course, it's agile. It's very flexible. So that's why we've been continuing to use it. And it worked really well with the team. And because of minimum advanced planning, uh, product impact is also really immediate. Some of the cons we can think of is because there's no formal protocol and low data reliability. What I meant is using only three people uh, if you're doing a benchmark study, you need at least 16 people. 
if you're doing an uh, international study, mine's where you talk to as many as 20 people. So three people only, again, that's why it's focusing on the smaller features and the smaller areas. And like a Bing team, risk of not utilizing users, if you continue to bring in them for every Friday or every Thursday for three people. And because of the convenience, a team start thinking that, hey, why can't we just run quick pulse study? Why is end to end, but just, can we just run a quick pulse study? So it's a risk of not differentiating full study requirements as well as a quick pulse requirement. So for researchers or PMs to running this type of study, make sure that expectation is pretty clear. Some of the applications you can use for quick pulse, it's like sprint specific work, obvious work, simpler, smaller features. You can just even show the sprint demos to get overall feedback. You don't need to come up with the tasks. Sometimes you can also test with a very simple navigation of a scenario. And low fidelity prototype, like a paper prototype, and the storyboards are perfect for the quick pulse. But like I keep mentioning, end-to-end, long-term scenario may or may not work because those are required a large number of uh, user, user samples, complex systems, competitive analysis, benchmark, card sort, surveys, as well as international studies. Those require a large end to be able to even statistically significant some of them. So you can't use that for the quick pass study. Next thing is the fun one, um, persona happy hours. We, we, done, we are able to do only two, but we had uh, so much fun. And we basically bringing in the new users, uh, real users, and targeting our persona profile. It just a mingle with our team. They don't get to see the real user often. Developers and QAs and PMs often encounter more uh, customers, but some people are never able to actually see that real user, and you know, they are creating the customer-facing product. So it's important for them to actually face-to-face -face what kind of thing they come out. Um, they, they are very honest, collaborative, and as soon as we bring it here, we have a food and music and drinks, so it's, it's easy for them to kind of bring them in. And it has to be Friday. Friday afternoon is the key, because otherwise, Thursday, you still have to work next day, right? So inviting designers, PMs, devs, and QA. And it's a really great way to hang out with them. And I don't, I myself don't get to see many developers and QAs, but uh, I really would like to kind of engage with them. So a kind of educational session, but at the same time, it's, it's a shocking value too, because user might say something you don't expect, and it's like, oh, that's interesting. So it's aha moment. So, as you see, Justin is enjoying Angie um, happy hours. This is Angie, uh, product owner, Azure product owner, happy hours. Uh, he was actually hosting the, some of the session. He himself is a product owner, but we also have an additional session with Aaron. Uh, um, this, uh, this was a technical computing um, division. We actually used a real external user to mingle. So, I cooked some shumais and sushis and bought some beer, so we had uh, tons of fun. So, just to wrapping up, go to Azure AUX, we have to really minimize the uh, time through the loop so that we can impact the user much faster in a meaningful way. I'm sorry, I, I didn't see any hand during the session, so uh, I didn't take any questions. So. Now is the time to QA, Q&A, but before that I have to special thanks to Sam to let me, pushing me to do this, uh, this talk, Christina Boro for product, providing uh, the Bing QPS example, Tyler to be able to participate, write study, Justin to participate on Persona Happy Hours, and of course Brian, Laurie, entire TFS team, and David WS team, it's a wonderful, wonderful people. So get back to the Q&A. Questions for Mickey? In the back. Actually, if, we, if there's any Japanese person, I can actually answer in the Japanese too. <laughs> so feel free, please.
Go ahead. Talk loudly. I just want to say that um, I've seen a lot of uh, approaches to Agile UX, and I've seen it done very, very, very wrong. Mm -hmm. um, this is probably the best talk that I've seen on Agile UX, so thank you. Well, that's great. Thank you. <laughs> So, question or just a comment? <laughs> Questions? Yes, go ahead. Good point, good point. Persona, do you get the resistance for persona? So, at the beginning, uh, we didn't have any personas. And, and because we are creating for the Scrum Masters and Product Owner, we didn't have a persona. But we had a developer persona. But at, at the very uh, new to the most of the people at the TFS. So key is to take them to site visit. So uh, Justin can probably tell you all about it. What I did was I initiated the site visit for the different the places. So yes, Scrum Master exists. Yes, Product Owner exists. Let, let me take you to the, the place. It's kind of fun because it's like a field trip. And when we went to the Starbucks and Vertifold, we, we actually went to the many places like AT&T, T-Mobile. And actually, they can start to see that, wow, these people are different. So it's almost like a grounding up. It's not like, here's persona, picture, name, just use it. I have to kind of engage them to be able to really understand a persona may be important for the creating a product. So I have to do some groundwork for that. I appreciate the question. And I saw you, yes. Good question. If you have a good UX researcher, usually that's not the case. <laughs> but uh, the thing is, because just the three people, you need to be able to see the trend. So you have to be very, very focused area. For example, we had a, a issue with some of the navigation um, and the web access. We have only um, three people, but even three people, we had a, Tyler was there, and we have a PMs there, and me, just the three of the different perspective of eyes really helped. So not just a UX researcher try to do the three people study and give them results. Uh, important piece is people need to actually watch the study. The PM has to watch the study. Designer has to watch the study. So we have to in agreement in one point that here is the issue, I think we need to fix it, and so on. So. Engagement is always the key for the UX researcher. We don't want to just send out the data, then believe me, this is what happened. We don't want to do that. We want to involve people. And it's almost like, it's not just my idea, it's your idea too. So let's just co incorporate together. It's, it's agile, collaborative, and flexible. Any other question? Yes. A right method, yes. Yeah. It seems like um, there would be, uh, having never done anything like that before, okay. uh, is there uh, somewhere I can go to get more information on that? Yes. And yes. Compare? Right method, it's a pretty, pretty common for uh, common knowledge for the UX researcher. And Mike Medrick uh, is a senior UX researcher in Microsoft. And five years ago, he invented from a game studio. First project he did is Asia Empire, which is, which is a fascinating study. He, he actually, uh, he have an entire paper around it. So just, just email me, I can send you all these, um, there is a right method, that's the, his right method, but there is an application for the right method. There's lots of people use it in a different approach. I'm myself using in a one-day approach. Uh, original right method doesn't really tell you. It's actually you have to be done in the right one day or six people. They, they actually use the 12 people for the three-day period. So it's... It, it, it depends on what you need. So you, I can get in touch with you and so we take offline and discuss more, and I can give you some um, answer to the, some of the, your concerns. Any other? Yes. Yeah. 
Yes, but I, I didn't uh, internationalization. Which is, it's a good example. You can do quick pulse. You can't really do don't. I, I just went to um, Japan about back in May, and we are initially do just a two focus group, which is just six people and six people, 12 people. I said, no, we have to do more. So we decided to visit um, 18 um, Dokomo, um, and we also visit NEC Fujitsu. We tried to get uh, more people's perspective in the different companies. Therefore, uh, you, you can't really um, internationalize with just the three people. Yes, it doesn't work. So that's why the application, when I talked about it, the very last slide, Quick Pulse doesn't probably apply for the international study. So uh, if you have like small elements with actual uh, people, for example, if you're testing with Germans, long letters, uh, may be able to do, but it's, it's a very tricky. I haven't really thought much about it, and I need to have some uh, application uh, go toward maybe localization, internalization. It's a, those are the really good questions I'm still keep thinking about it. Does anybody else have a question? I can run a mic to you. Raise your hand. Right there, okay. I know most companies don't have UX designers on their staff. My company is no exception. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you suggest that team can learn so as to not uh, give help to the users? Right. So you don't have a UX designer or UX researchers? None. No. <laughs> Usually, <laughs> but don't you have a project managers and program managers? It's not a software company, no. <laughs> okay. It's internal development, so. Okay. So normally, you must have some customer-facing uh, person exists, even like a support. No, it, it's usually me. <laughs> Are you sure? You, then you should do it. <laughs> no, but I'm... You should <laughs> run a quick pulse. <laughs> no, I'm Seriously? a manager and an application architect, so I, I don't have the time for it, so... Right. Uh, but I, I, I would suggest just get out the door, make some time, and if you can run every week, that's okay. Okay. But even a once a month, having a maybe six people, eight people, you could do the user panel. There is a many UX research method exist. Okay. Quick pass is just a one of the method. If you have, you happen to have a customer facing uh, the person, that person can run it. But for new case, you could maybe bringing in the customer or going to the customer site, or like a focus group. You can finish in one one yeah. hour. Okay. So. Just a using a variation to okay. be able to meet what you need. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Okay, we're right here, and th and then you. Okay, I was going to ask if you can give some more examples of yes. uh, the type of instructions or guidance you give to users in the Quick Pulse. Quick Pulse study. Like when you sit them down, what are you telling them to do? So it all depends on the features. Uh, at, at like a TFS team, we have about like 13 different scenarios going on. And even those 13 different scenarios, each of them has a PMs. And each PM has a different user story as well. So it all depends what you're testing. Sometimes we would just want to test with the icons. Sometimes we want to test just task itself. Sometimes we would just want to test, like Justin's one, uh, it's the storyboarding. So it's hard to tell them um, how, to, how to do the storyboarding in a certain way. So we give them a free format. Hey, if you want to come up with a music uh, application on your Windows phone, could you show me how you're going to come up with it? So it all depends. It's very flexible. So whatever you need. And nice to have someone ownership, like customer-facing person have ownership, to be able to kind of direct what kind of a question they should do. But I can, I can send some of the examples and script I usually call. I didn't usually have a time to even come up with my own script. So TF, TFS, PM team did a wonderful job that, hey, what kind of script do you want me to test? So they can actually give it to me, the entire script, and I can revise it quick, then test it with the three users. So that was usually the case. So it was nice. 
Is the user experience um, intended to replace user acceptance testing, or is it a complement that's earlier in the process? I would say complement. <coughs> Any other questions? And if not, we can we can eat lunch. But does anybody have one last question? I'll be around here and stick around. So if you have any question, just come at me and talk to me. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mickey. Thank you so much.